during our Farm Basics time today, we want to talk about one of the most misunderstood pesticides that's out there today. It's the neonicotinoid pesticide family. When you think about neonicotinoid, right away you may say, boy, that sounds a lot like nicotine. Yep, it does, because nicotine is actually in this same family of chemistry. Now, millions of people across our country happen to use nicotine on a daily basis. So you say, well, wait a minute, what's the safety like? I know that smoking cigarettes can be dangerous to my health. Uh, is using a small amount of the same type of chemistry on the seed a really dangerous thing? Well, that is a good point. It's neat to, to look at what the safety ratings are versus this class of chemistry versus others that are being used in the pesticide industry. All right, what Darren was trying to say there is these neonicotinoid products as seed treatments are actually quite safe. We used to have much more dangerous products available like Lindane, for example, but once the Neonix came out, then Lindane went off the market, which was a good thing. But here's the problem. The Neonix are really the only insecticide family we have. The problem with the Neonix, even though, yes, they're safe to human beings, they're systemic, they're inexpensive, they're very effective, we got all these benefits, but the problem with the Neonix is they can kill bees. And the issue with that is they don't just instantly kill them, they kill them slowly, and they can actually, the bee, bring some of that Neonix back to the hive and kill the entire hive. That's where there could be a real problem. So when you look at bee mortality, this is one of the things that's causing a lot of issues across our country and really around the world. What's causing the bee mortality? One of the biggest things that doesn't get talked about is varroa mites. They're tiny little mites that actually are parasitic and feed off that bee, weakening the bee and allowing it to, to get more uh, diseases and those kinds of things because it's weak, it's in a weakened state, uh, and it's very susceptible to viruses and other things. Think about trying to control a bug in a colony of bees. It's very difficult and that's tough for beekeepers today. So this is one of the big causes uh, of what's really going on. Studies that have been done like at Washington State University in 2016 show that the neonics used as seed treatments really pose little harm to bees if they're used properly. So for farmers, they're trying to use the neonics in the right way at the right time to avoid injury to bees. That's right. The vast majority of bee kills have come from post-emerge uses of neonics. So that's why, as a general statement, we advise most farmers to avoid neonic use post-emerge, but to instead use those as seed treatments so it's safer to the bees, they get tremendous benefit on the seed, and it's a really good thing for everybody. Well, another thing that's really good for everybody is stopping our Weed of the Week from robbing yields. We'll show you how to stop this tough weed coming up later in the show.